morning, everyone. This is the Kriya to raise the Kundalini set, number four, five, and six. So it's three short Kriyas that are put together. There's a lot of breath of fire, the Bastrika breath, the bellows breath, the forced exhale through the nose, automatic inhale. So it's just, you can do them slow. You can do them faster. Just try to get into the rhythm with the equal forced exhale, equal inhale. So it's just like a bellows going back and forth. We'll be doing long, deep breathing. We're also doing a four stroke, four stroke breath, which is like you're, it's like you're breathing through a straw through your nose. So it's four inhales, filling from the base, bottom of the lungs, through the chest lungs, all the way to the clavicle bones, the collarbones, and then there's four exhales. So we do that in the third set, the third sequence. It's a very enlivening breath and we'll do a fair amount of core. And um, it's a pretty well rounded practice and there's a really nice meditation at the end. The meditation is based on the Sa Ta Na Ma chant. Sa meaning life, infinity, Ta birth, Na death, change, transformation, and then ma, rebirth, regrowth, new ideas, new life. The whole sequence of life, which we see there with Mauricio, little three-year-old Mauricio joining us today. And Mari, looks like Mari is here too. Hello. So <clears throat> let's sit up tall, begin our practice. <clears throat> Right away, connecting with the breath. The energy of the breath, the life force, the prana, which rides on your breath. You can sit tall, you can sit in Gyan Mudra, the wisdom knowledge mudra, thumb, index, fingers, touching. Mudras are just seals. We have different energy fields in the body and it makes a different energy connection when you're connecting thumb, index, finger together. The ancients believed this was the mudra for wisdom and knowledge and I gather from that a connection to your intuition, your wisdom eye, your third eye, your third, your sixth chakra. Scanning your body. How do you feel this morning? Are there any restrictions or constrictions? Or if you're tuning in at a later date, it may be afternoon, it may be evening. Just being conscious of your body throughout the practice. Whatever sounds are in your space, just make them part of your practice. It's all part of your surrounding environment. And finally, our thoughts our ever-present thoughts. In the next hour, you can observe your thoughts without judgment, just watching them come and go. What is the nature of your thought? Do you have repeated thoughts? Can you change your thought? Yes, we can. At any moment, we can change to a new thought. Let's bring our hands into prayer position to recite the Adi Mantra, the Ong 
Namo Guru Dev Namo. Three times, once for ourselves, once for each other in this virtual space, or if you're tuning in later, and once for the greater world. I'm honoring the divine creative energy in the universe, that it resides in me, and it resides in everyone, acknowledging it and recognizing it in yourself and others. Three big inhale exhales. Adi Mantra, inhale. Om Namo Guru Dev Namo. Om Namo Guru Dev Namo. Om Namo Guru Dev Namo. Open the eyes and for a short little warm up, let's just open the legs wide, moving into what we call life nerve stretch. So first you've been sitting for a while, at least 15 minutes. So we're stretching the knees out. Maybe I can reach over and grab my toes. Maybe the legs will straighten out. They may have quite a bend. Whatever they have is just fine. Maybe you're just grabbing your knees, your shins. Maybe you can make it to your ankles and maybe you can make it to your toes. Long, deep breathing through the nose. Keep stretching the legs as wide as you can. Stretching that, not stretching, but dealing with the sciatic nerve. The nerves don't stretch, but the Muscles certainly do. Fascias releasing around the muscles. You'll feel the stretch in your lower lumbar spine. You'll feel it in your thoracic spine. Slowly trying to get that head closer to the mat. Someday, maybe on my thousandth day of practice, my Forehead will come to the mat. This is day 358. Keep breathing into it. Everything is stretching. Hamstrings, calves, you're flexing your feet, dorsiflexion, so the arches are stretching. Shoulders are opening up, chest is opening, all 24 vertebrae, 5 lumbar, 12 thoracic, 7 cervical. And now sit up tall. Take the hands behind you. So now I'm opening up. Maybe I can look to the ceiling. Hmm. And let's begin the Kriya. So we're, our legs will come together. We're going to lie back. And we begin this Kriya with breath of fire. Bastrika breath, bellows breath on our backs. So when you're lying on your back, your head will be on the mat. You breathe naturally in a perfect way. So put the left hand over the lower abdomen, right hand on your chest. If you take a big inhale, the abdomen will rise because you're filling up the lungs from the lowest part. Big inhale. Abdomen rises, exhale, the belly comes towards the spine. You can help it push the air out by pushing down. So now we're going to do 60 seconds of breath of fire. That's the forced exhale through the nose. 
Automatic inhale through the nose. Let's begin. Big inhale, slide your forearms under your buttocks so the palms are flat on the mat underneath your hamstrings. Another big inhale, hold the breath and lift your legs about 18 inches off the mat. You're pointing the toes, feet are together. You're still holding your breath. And take it down. You can take the arms out. We're going to do one more minute of breath of fire, Bastrika Beth. Just do the best you can. Sorry about that. Okay. We're going to do one more breath of fire for one minute and let's begin. Big inhale, slide the arms under the hips, under the buttocks, exhale, now another big inhale. Let's hold the breath, lift the legs up. You're gonna hold the breath, holding the legs up about 18 inches. You're working on your core. And release. Just going to roll over onto your side, push up with your palm. You're going to come up into a seated position. <clears throat> so you're sitting in easy pose. This is half lotus where the leg comes up a little bit higher. These are some simple shoulder shrugs. What's interesting about them we're trying to isolate the movement right in the shoulders. Everything else is calm. Even the shoulders are not tense. So it's inhaling with the left shoulder up, exhaling with the right one coming up. So inhale, exhale. That's the breathing pattern all through the nose. Everything is relaxed, no gripping in the hips. Even my shoulders are relaxed. I'm focusing on one body part, just like dancers learn to do, or athletes, professional athletes that know how to work with each part of the body.
one more minute. Long, deep breathing, really accessing your breath. And take it down, just close your eyes, observe. 15 minutes into the practice. Where's your mental state, emotional state, physical state. Moving on, we're still isolating body parts. So we're trying to isolate just the heart chakra here with a Sufi grind. Sufi grinds, we're usually doing them with big grinds through the core. But this, I'm trying to isolate the movement just in my chest. Being conscious of this fourth chakra, this heart center named Anahata, A-N-A-H-A-T-A -A -A in Sanskrit, Anahata, meaning unbroken, unhurt. We're working with this heart center throughout the Kriyas today. Now reverse the direction. There's a seed sound for each chakra and this seed sound for the heart is yum, yum. I inhale as I come forward, I exhale as I come back, really attempting to focus on the heart. Coming back to center. If you have a wall space in your house, in the room I'm in today, I, I don't have a wall space handy, so I'm gonna set up next to my sofa. But I have this blanket here, this red blanket you can see. It helps release the lumbar spine if you can come onto a blanket. So you sit next to the wall or your sofa or chair, and I just roll over. So I'm on the blanket. It helps release the lumbar spine. So if I was on the wall, I would be here. Or if you're on the sofa, I'm treating it like a wall. Or you could do this in the middle of the room too. If you don't, if you're in a hotel room or something and you don't have the props you need, you could just sit like this. This calls for shoulder stand, but I don't teach shoulder stand on Zoom unless it's a regular part of someone's practice. My arms are out of the T. Now what makes this uh, pose a little bit different, I'm going to do breath of fire now. So it makes it much more active. So let's begin breath of fire.
Big inhale, hold the breath and squeeze the bandha. So squeeze the energy locks at anus, sex organs, pull navel towards spine, and release. Just long, deep breathing here. It's getting a little tiring for me because I don't have my legs up against a wall. Viparidi Karani. So I'm gonna lower my legs on the sofa, but if you're against the wall, keep your legs up. Take the arms over the head if you can. You're gonna open up your shoulders. Now let's do 30 seconds of breath of fire. The forced exhale through the nose, automatic inhale. Let's begin. Big inhale, hold the breath, squeeze the bandhas. And release. Just gonna slide your legs down the wall. I wish I could leave you here. Then you'll be on your side. We're gonna stay on our backs. So, it's nice if you have a block handy. We're going to do this with a supported bridge. So in bridge pose, my feet are on my mat. I've got my block handy here. My, my arms are at my side. I'm going to push down into the floor with my feet and lift my pelvis up and slide this block on the medium position under my sacrum. My head is on the mat, or you could have it on a blanket if you wanted something just right under your neck. But you want that space where you could place your hand under your neck. You want that cervical opening there. We're just breathing long and deeply here. If you want to amplify, you could straighten your legs. That creates more lordosis in the lumbar spine and in the thoracic spine as well. Long and deep breathing here. You can also do this pose without the block, just lifting the buttocks up. The block is just gives you a little break. And if the legs are extended, then you pretty much need the block, although you could do it without, but that's more tricky. I'd prefer you do it with the block if you extend the legs. Breathing long and deeply here. If the legs are extended, draw the soles of the feet back towards the midline of the body. The feet are right under the knees. Push down on the feet, lift the pelvis up, remove the prop, remove the block. Now we're gonna move onto our stomachs. So it's as though you're in uh, coming into a cobra pose. <clears throat> My chin is on the mat. My feet are together. My hands are at my side, palms up. I'm gonna raise my right leg as so I'm gonna kick my buttocks. I'm going to reach around with the opposite hand, with the left hand, 
and grab onto the ankle of that right foot. You might need a strap here or a belt. With my right hand, I'll create Gyan Mudra, thumb index finger, and place the back of my hand right on my lumbar spine, right on the sacrum there, base of the lumbar. I'm breathing long and deeply here. Try to kick into the hand so the leg is active, also makes the arm active. If you'd like to amplify, you can do 30 seconds of breath of fire with me. Keep the chin on the mat. You really feel it in your belly pushing into your mat. And just breathe naturally now. Trying to kick into that hand, lengthening the arm, lengthening the leg. Now float the leg down, arms come back to your side. Lift the left leg, bring the left leg towards the buttocks. I reach around with my opposite hand, the right hand grabbing the top of the left foot or the ankle. You might use a strap here. My left hand comes into Gyan Mudra, thumb index finger, the back of the hand just rests on my lumbar spine. Kicking into the hand, lengthening, lengthens the arm, engages hamstrings and quads. There's a lot going on here in the physical body. Now you can amplify if you choose with Breath of Fire with me for 30 seconds. Big inhale, let's squeeze the bandhas, hold the breath. And release, just observe. Now slide the hands under the shoulders. You're gonna push up on all fours. Come around, sitting on your buttocks. We're gonna move into Navasana, boat pose. I've been doing this with the block where I put the block between my thighs. It really helps hold this pose. So my hands are behind me, fingers pointed away from me. So this is a modified Navasana. So you can lift the legs up. I'm at 45 degrees. I see Rodney's going for the full expression of Navasana. The legs are straight. You can do that if you choose. So's Melanie. You can hold it longer with this 
modified modified navasana with the leg, especially if the block is between the legs. <clears throat> Long, deep breathing here. And take it down and rest for a moment or rest at any time. Now I'll try the full expression of Navasana. I'll remove the block and take the arms up, legs up to 60 degrees. And the full expression, the arms come forward. You're balancing on the sits bones. Good job, Sarah, Dave, Janet. Wow, everybody's doing it. Fantastic. And release. You're going to come right on to sitting on your heels. I like to put a blanket on top of my heels. It's just easier, more comfortable. We're doing a little more Banda work now. We have three energy locks in the body. Mula Banda is at the coccyx, base of the spine. Uddiyana Banda is right here in the core, energy lock. And then we have a third lock, Jalandahara Banda, right here at the throat. They correspond with the energy chakras. Chakras are just means wheel in Sanskrit. They're whirling forms of energy going up and down the spinal column. What's different about this, we squeeze, we lock the bandhas at the end of the exhale. So inhale, big inhale, then we'll exhale, then we'll do the squeeze and hold. We'll do that three times. So big inhale, exhale, and now squeeze the bandhas, dip the chin just a bit. It's challenging because you've exhaled your breath. You can't take another breath. Now inhale, exhale, all through the nose, of course. Inhale again, exhale. This third time we'll do the squeeze. Big inhale, exhale, and squeeze your bandhas. Dip the chin. Energy locks are engaged. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Third time we'll do the squeeze, inhale, exhale, and squeeze. Dip the chin, spine is tall. You get the sense that things have stopped inside the body and breathe. Take the knees together if you can. If you can sit in this hero's pose, Varasana. If it's hard for you, you can sit in easy pose. You can also, some people, it's really hard to sit with the foot in this plantar flexion. So you can have a blanket under the foot, top of the foot that helps release. By all means, use your props to make yourself comfortable. That's what they're, what they're here for. We're moving into Sat Kriya, which is a well-established Kriya in Kundalini Yoga. It's different than our normal breath, so it's good for the brain because we're reversing what we normally do. So normally I take a big inhale, the belly expands, right? On this one, it's just the opposite. I'm going to go Sat, Sat. I'm trying to suck in my belly and take in air and then expand my belly on the nam, letting the air out. So it's just the opposite. So it's like this, sat, nam, belly gets fat. Sat, nam, sat, truth, nam, name. So you're reciting the greeting and salutation in most of the Kundalini world which means my truth is my identity. I acknowledge the truth. Your truth is your identity. The mudra hands are just in prayer. They're over the head. 
we try to get the arms really close to the ears as close as you can we're going to go for two minutes of sat kriya try to do it with me if you've not done it before it's hard to get words out when you're sucking air in but they will come you i mean it's hard to get sound out but it will come sat nam 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 big inhale sat hold the breath squeeze the bandhas stretch the arms long you're stretching the spine even taller and release we're going to come right down onto our stomachs so it's like i'm coming back into a cobra chin is on the mat feet are together tops of feet on the mat i'm going to slide my arms under my body so i'm in a a sphinx pose. My elbows are right under my shoulders. Palms are flat on the mat. Long, deep breathing. Practice your exteroception. Feeling what's making contact with your mat, tops of your feet, toes knees, maybe shin, quads, pelvic, pubic bone, genitals, maybe mm, stomach really is pretty much lifted off the mat. Your forearms, all 10 fingers. Seems basic, but it's all part of being agile, having agility that we know what part of our body is making contact with the earth, with the ground. It helps when we're out hiking about. Okay, now we're gonna move into one minute of breath of fire. Let's begin. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat>
big inhale, hold the breath, squeeze the bandhas. And release, take the forehead to the mat, palms are just flat under your shoulders, rest here for a moment. Now push yourself up onto your heels. We're moving to the third set now. I'm gonna sit back on my left heel. So I like to put a blanket under that left heel and my left sits bone. Then I'm gonna bring this right foot up. So my foot is on the mat and I'm just balancing on this left sits bone on my heel. I've got my arms making my little table here. This is where we're gonna move into the Satanama chant. It's the four stroke breath. So the four stroke breath, you're gonna breathe, just follow the chant. So on the Sata Nama, you'll be taking four inhale breaths. So it'll be, and then four exhales. All through your breath, let's just follow the chant. I'll tell you when to begin so we're together. Everything's in place. And let's begin. Inhale, 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 exhale, 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 exhale. Inhale, 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 exhale, 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 exhale. You're inhaling breath all the way to the clavicles. Start at the bottom of the lungs and come all the way up. Think about the infinity of life, the change in life, new birth, new beginnings. Then we have change, transformation, physical death. And then we have rebirth, new life. And the cycle continues. Keep your four stroke breath going, four inhales, four exhales. Now we take our arms up 60 degrees. It's like we're greeting the morning. You're extending the spine. Still continue with the four stroke breath. Four inhales, four exhales. seconds here. I know it's getting challenging. Now 
Take the hands down, come back, sitting on the hips, sitting on the heels. I've got a block in front of me. My hands are on my knees. For two minutes, I'm bowing to my block or blanket or the mat. So inhaling up, exhaling down. Inhaling up, exhaling down. It's a moving meditation. Try to keep your buttocks close to your heels if you can. Coming up, just sit and observe, connecting body, mind, spirit. make a thumb into your fist, draw them back to your pectorals. This is a sequence for releasing anger, frustration. So inhale, the left arm goes out, exhale, the right arm goes out. So it's inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. You can do it with the rhythm of the music. Big inhale, big exhale, all through the nose. Two minutes, really punch the air. The Satanama chant, the chant of infinity is playing as your soundtrack. One more minute.
Draw both arms back to the chest. Big inhale. Hold the breath, squeeze the bandhas. And release, lie onto your back. Keep your head on the mat. So head is down, I'm lifting my legs up. I'm interlacing my elbow creases around my legs if you can. Trying to grab your elbows. Keep the head on the mat. Long deep breathing here. Let the cycle of life just wash over you. Now grab your feet like a happy baby pose. Or you can grab your ankles. And if you're able, try to take your legs straight. Maybe you can grab your big toes with your thumbs and peace sign fingers. And then I'm lifting my shoulders and my head off the mat. So I'm just balancing on my thoracic spine. Long, deep breathing here. These static poses, the slow twitch muscle fibers are firing. It's an unusual posture to balance on the thoracic spine. All the pressure points up and down the spine are being activated by the weight of your body. And now take the knees into your forehead, forehead to your knees. We're gonna come up to a seated position. I'm gonna sit on my, my two blankets to raise my lumbar spine. Because we're gonna be here for three or four minutes. So once you're in position, Remember, we've been focusing on this Anahata, the fourth chakra today. So my left hand is right here on my right pectoral, my left hand over my right. Close your eyes. Just think about this heart chakra, the Anahata, unbroken, unhurt. We process the joys and the griefs of life more intensely in this part of our body. Our disappointments, our regrets, 
our hurts, our loss, and also our joys, our gratitude. Stay connected to your breath. We'll play this lullaby chant of Satanama. Just let it wash over you. Life, infinity, birth, change, transformation, death, rebirth. back into our Shavasana. This week we've been putting our legs on a chair seat or I've got my sofa here so my legs will just come onto my sofa. It accesses the parasympathetic nervous system more quickly with the legs elevated. Letting everything go. Nothing's required of you. I'll be bringing you back with the bell in seven minutes. Letting the wisdom of your body harmonize, balance, create the equanimity we all desire. We 
your intuitive nature, that sixth chakra, third eye is open, guiding you for your highest and best good.
beginning to breathe together, inhaling through the nose. Big audible sigh, ah. Try to take the vocal cords, try to make the sound, the lowest sound you can make. Inhale through the nose, ah. Vibrating the vocal cords at their lowest possible range. One more time, ah. Feel that vibration in your chest and anahata. Begin to wiggle the fingers and the toes, your ankles and your wrists. Then preparing to move away from the prop so you can slide onto your side and then carefully remove your chair if it's in your way. Coming onto your back so you can stretch open and release anything that may need a little more stretching. Spinal rolls are nice up and down on the mat or in little circles on your sacrum. Drawing the knees towards the chest, the chest towards the forehead and the knees. <clears throat> Maybe some spinal twists. Legs to one side, torso, face to the opposite side. Make sure you do both sides. Then it's nice to stretch the legs in a happy baby or a figure four, a modified pigeon pose. Or Supta Baddha Konasana, where you draw the soles of your feet in. I see Pablo and Rodney in that pose. Dave, too. Margaret, she has her legs on the floor, or you can have the legs elevated. The Marea is moving into rubbing the soles of the feet, and rubbing the palms stimulates all the nerve endings, awakening the body to coming back as you're getting closer to coming back up to a seated position. Bringing our hands to prayer position. <sighs> Beautiful practice, everyone. Thank you, Mimi. Thank you, Rodney. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you, Mari. Thank you, Medea. Thank you, Pablo. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Susan Alexander. Had to leave a little early. And thank you, Mauricio, so being here so so nice in your in your um Buddha pose. <laughs> He's learning at a very young age. We'll close with the longtime sun. Please sing with me. May the longtime sun shine upon you, all love surround you, and the pure light within you guide your way on, guide your way on. Guide your way on, Satnam, Satnam, Satnam. We take our hands in prayer, thumb to third eye, bowing to each other, acknowledging each other in the virtual space. If you tune in at a later time, we're acknowledging you now. And coming back up, we bow to each other and we say Satnam. Satnam.